Swaziland is located in southern Africa and is bordered by South Africa and Mozambique. It has a population of about one million people. Swaziland has very diverse landscapes, including mountains, savannas, and valleys. The country has an unusually rich geological history and is home to some of the oldest and most unusual rocks on Earth. For this reason, Swaziland is a frequent destination for Earth scientists interested in the earliest evolution of the Earth's crust. This ancient geological era is called the Archean era. We have a full variety of uh, rocks. We've got some of the oldest uh, rocks known to mankind at 3.6 billion, down to tertiary uh, stuff, which is quite recent. We have got the uh, famously known guanines, which are just granite gneiss. Some of them are sometimes called uh, tonalites and the others are called granodiorites. And uh, we also have younger ones, you know, in the Karoo uh, material, which uh, happens to have coal in Swaziland. We have got uh, people who are researchers. You've got people who are academicians. You've got students who come up here. And sometimes they always seek uh, some involvement from the department. And uh, we also employ geologists who do uh, general uh, geological mapping in the country. The expedition that we have right now are people who have come to uh, you know, uh, study uh, the evolution of the Earth's crust because we've got some of the oldest rocks. And then if you do a proper you know, analysis and study of that, it may lead you to finding out as to how these rocks were concentrated and then how minerals were actually in place in the, in the rocks themselves. And then it may just happen to lead you to the formations, the rock parts that may actually have the minerals of economic interest uh, seated in them. In addition to its geology, Swaziland is known for its abundant mineral resources and its old mines. In fact, the oldest mine on Earth is the Lion Cave Mine that is 43,000 years old. The mine is divided into three phases. The first phase was the ancient mining, um, which goes back to about 43,000 years back, which is the oldest known mine in the world. Um, it could might be much older than 43,000 years, but carbon dating goes back to 43,000 years in any accuracy. Um, that mine was done by the Sen or the Bushmen people, where they basically mined for hematite. Um, they used the hematite for various reasons in their days. Um, one reason they would mix the hematite with the blood of an eel and they could perform their paintings out of that. Um, they would also use the uh, hematite for ritual purposes and they could perform convectional rainfall out of it. They also used the hematite for makeup for their women. And then the second phase of the mining started at about 450 AD. Um, it was done by um, Bantu speakers that came in from Southern Africa. Uh, the language that they spoke is unknown. Um, they, when they came, they mined for iron ore as well. And in those olden days, they would hit the, the, the iron ore in a furnace. And then they could shape up tools for agriculture activities and weapons for hunting. And then the third phase of the mining started in 1964, which was the commercial mining. It was done by the Anglo-Americans. They mined up about 28 million tons of high quality of iron ore, ranging from 60% to 80% iron ore. Um, the mine closed, um, they basically employed about 850 people in the mine. And the mine was, so the mine was done basically in this big pit here. Um, they would track the, they would basically drill into the mountain and they would apply dynamites to blast. And then there would be trucks that would pick up the, the raw material from here to a station that is situated this side. Um, and then there it would be, the iron ore would be graded and weighed and it would be loaded on a conveyor belt that would take it down to the bottom uh, where we, it would get washed and then be taken to a railway station that was situated at Gatag. And then it would be loaded into the train that would take it straight to Mozambique. And from Mozambique it would be loaded up in a ship and that would take two weeks to get to Japan. Swaziland is a country with rich natural resources, fascinating geology, and friendly people. 
Many important secrets concerning the Earth's crust are locked in the rocks of this beautiful country. A visit to Swaziland is highly recommended to all.